In this video, I will show you how to edit like Imagaji and it's this new sovereign style. It has a bit of like Roman painting style and I haven't done a video on Imagaji in a while, so I'm really excited for this one. If you want to know how to edit exactly like Imagaji, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. The link is in the description. In there, I have multiple deep dives on Imagaji. I have a interview with the editor of Imagaji and you will learn a lot of advanced editing techniques and also how to get clients. You'll get clients from me. So check it out and now let's jump into it. So I created a couple of images in Midjourney, but of course you can use any AI generation software. And by the way, these prompts look really smart. I'm not that smart. I created these prompts with ChatGPT. The keywords are mainly ancient Rome ruins and also painted style. Then later on, Roman architecture. And I also created these images, which we will use later on. Vintage King's crown head drawing and hand-drawn chess piece vintage. And again, the keywords here are drawn or drawing and vintage. Now, if you don't AI generate them, you can also search these on Freepik. Now, of course, if you are in the Social Creator Club Pro, you will get the project file, including the assets. But if you don't want to invest in that, I also give the assets for free. So you can at least follow this video. Link for that is also in the description. Now, I like this image the most, so I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to Photoshop and just paste it. Now, I'm gonna grab my other image here. I'm gonna also copy that. And I'm also gonna go to Photoshop. Now, I'm gonna paste this also. I'm gonna just turn this off now and I'm gonna make my artboard bigger because what we want to do is basically stitch these images together. So let's just drag this out by a lot. And I basically want this to be double the size, something like this. You can see it, that this is like the middle point. Then make sure the fill is set to background default and then just press okay. Then let's turn the other image on and I'm gonna move this over to the right and see if this fits fits perfectly that's nice and as you can see now we need to fill up this middle now you can do this by finding these assets or maybe duplicating this bush what i'm gonna do is basically select this and use the generative fill feature and i'm just hitting enter and seeing what happens now and that worked perfectly look at how awesome this looks we can actually click through maybe see if there's a better one but I think this first one is actually so, so cool. Now that's great. And what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna go to the crop tool again, and I'm just gonna make this artboard a bit bigger, maybe something like this, and press generative expand again, press enter. I'm doing this just so there's a bit of room to play with later on. And this is also perfect, beautiful. Like, oh my God, look at this image. This is like art, right? <laughs> Makes me really happy. Now that we've done this, I want to separate some elements, right? So ideally we have this background and we have this in the foreground. And same with this, we have this in the foreground, including the trees, and then have this in the background. And the best thing to do is to first select all of these layers, right click, and then merge layers. So these are just one layer. It makes things way easier, trust me. Now to select these, we can of course mask this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this now first by right clicking and then duplicate or command J on your keyboard. And then I'm gonna use the object selection tool. And let's just see how good this works. Sometimes it has a bit of hard time recognizing things. In this case, it does also. I'm just gonna set my mode to lasso. So now we're gonna select things and I'm just gonna do it in parts. So I'm first gonna see if we can maybe select a bit like this and let's just draw around this and then just like cut it off. Okay, cool. Now hold shift and then you can actually add something to this selection. There we go. And I'm gonna add this too. Let's see if this is gonna work while holding shift and just drawing. Okay, now if you want to remove something, you can hold alt. And again, hold shift to, let's see if we can add this bush too, would be nice, perfect. Now, things like this at the bottom is fine. We can always add a like, selection to this anyway. Let's see if it can get this tree, that would be great. Probably not, but we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere, that's cool. Let's also add this. Okay, somewhat fine, this is fine for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the mask. Now turn the bottom layer, turn the opacity down a bit so we can basically see what we have selected. And as you can see this works pretty fine i'm quite happy with this it also doesn't have to be perfect but i do want to add this at the bottom so i'm just going to go to the brush tool right click and turn the hardness on to 100 percent and turn the size down to maybe like 87 that's fine now make sure these colors are set to black and white and 
we want to set it to white because we want to add this to our image. So I want to add this, add this too, it's cool. Now here I'm gonna right click and turn the softness down a bit. So this will be added to it, something like this. And I'm gonna do the same here on the left and turn the hardness down a lot, increase the size by a lot, and then just add this. So it's a bit more smooth as you will, perfect. I'm gonna start with this first background. What I basically want to do is make sure that now in this background, this foreground is removed. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna to go to the first layer, so the below the layer. I'm gonna turn this off for now. And I'm gonna to go to select, modify, expand. And I'm gonna expand it by quite a lot, maybe 30 pixels, just to make sure that we're filling this area. Just make sure the opacity is set to 100%. And then let's press the generated fill again. Press generate. The first one isn't bad. I think there's still too much elements here, but let's turn the other one on. I think it should work actually. Okay, let's see if there's another one. No, too much details. I think number one is probably the best. Yeah, that should work. Cool. What I do see is this ugly ass element in the middle. Uh, let's get rid of that. Again, just go to the brush tool, make sure the mask is selected and now make sure the color is set to black and let's get rid of this. Again, we can just mask it a bit like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna make my brush a bit smaller. Now we can actually always move this up a bit to just cover our mistakes. Uh, we can do that in After Effects too later on if, uh, if needed. But I think this is actually pretty fine. I'm happy with this. Uh, so so this is our first foreground. Now I'm gonna do the same with the right one. So here I want this sky to be basically separated, including those trees in the background. It's gonna be a bit more difficult. Hold Alt to zoom in and let's see if we can make that happen. Again, I'm just gonna turn off all the foreground layers just to make sure that we are not seeing anything weird. And I'm gonna use the object selection tool again and let's see if this works. It picked out the sky pretty well. Sometimes it does work really work well, except I want certain things to be added. So I'm just gonna hold shift and let's draw a couple of things here and let's just add everything in here. Maybe something like this. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. I want to add this too. Now, I think this works pretty well. I'm just gonna right click and duplicate this layer, press okay, and then mask this by clicking on the mask here or at the bottom. And let's turn the background layer again to the opacity maybe like 50%, just to see if we selected everything. Cool, that works. Now we do have to invert this selection, so press Command I to invert this. There we go, that works. Now I'm contemplating, am I gonna include this or not? I think it's part of the building, so we do have to, I think, include it. So let's just go to the brush. You can actually now even select this with the object selection tool. We should be able to select this part the image yeah there we go and then just go to the brush i'm gonna switch colors to white you can also press x to do this and let's fill this in quickly make our brush size a bit bigger so this goes a bit quicker there we go so we have a nice cool image here really really dope now again the background we need to basically make sure that there's no foreground in this so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hold command and click on the mask so this is selected now i'm gonna go to the normal rectangular I'm gonna go to the normal rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna remove a bit of this selection because if we're gonna use the generator fill now, it doesn't really make sense. So I'm just gonna hold Alt and then you can just drag and remove something from the selection. And same here, I'm also gonna remove this part. We don't need that. And we also don't need this. Something like this and let's go to select modify, expand, and again, 30 pixels should be fine. Let's turn the opacity to 100% again, and I'm gonna use the generated fill. Also make sure the other layers are off, so it won't sample the others. I just took a bigger reference. Blue sky, no trees. It's not perfect, but maybe this works. Let's turn the other one on. I think that actually works pretty fine. We could actually use this. Now, I do see some issues with this masking. It's not perfect, so let's just select this. Select this mask, go to the B for brush, and then we can actually get rid of these elements. I doubt we will see it in the end result, but I'm just gonna quickly get rid of this because I think it looks ugly. I'm really happy with this, this looks awesome. Now we just need to make sure the layers are right. So this is a foreground element, and I think this one is also a foreground element. Let me check. Yeah, this is also a foreground element. We'll just put these both on top and let's turn these both on. 
and then we have two backgrounds so if we turn the both the foregrounds off we should have them without the background looks a bit messy but that's fine you won't be able to see this later on let's turn these back on and it looks perfectly fine except here we have some issues and it's probably because one of these are overlapping and i think that's this one yeah so this is like the empty plate we have this weird element here i'm just gonna get rid of it so let's go to the brush make sure that this is set to black right click increase the size decrease the hardness a bit let's make this a bit more smooth we can actually get rid of this tree too because this tree will be overlaid anyway let's get rid of this tiny house too there we go if we now turn the foregrounds on it should all be fine there we go perfect so we have two foregrounds two backgrounds we can actually select all of these backgrounds so click on the first one and click on the last one including the backgrounds and we can right click merge layers and so we have one single layer now there's one last thing to do is because we have two layers here you might already see it in the mask this one is perfect but the other one isn't because it includes all of this and we don't need that so we're actually going to remove this from the mask now the easiest way to fix this in my opinion is to just select the left part of this image by using the normal selection tool go to the paint bucket tool and fill this with black and as you can see here in the preview of this mask now you can also see that this is removed that means that this part is left and this part is right and that means if we select them both we go to the move tool and we move this around we already have some parallax happening and that actually already looks super cool so i'm happy with that and we can even select them both and then right click and then merge layers so we have a foreground and background and if we now turn the background off as you can see we have a foreground and background separated i'm really happy with this i'm gonna save this as a psd so save as and then let's jump into after effects now let's just create a new composition 4k 25 frames per second press ok now let's drag the psd in make sure this editable layer styles is on composition retain layer size is also on and just press ok and it will create a comp we can open and as you can see we have a foreground and background now i'm just going to copy this over to our main comp and paste it here so we have our main comp here and now we can just drag this around and i'm just going to set the composition a bit i'm first going to right click and then transform fit to comp height this will basically as you can see fit it to the comp height and then i'm just going to move it while holding shift something like here that's cool and i'm already going to make it 3d so click on the 3d icon so it's 3d if you don't see this you might have to toggle the switches modes and i'm going to go to layer new camera this is actually fine but maybe disable the depth of field and make sure this is a one node camera press ok and then for the background i'm gonna move this to the back so press p for position let's set this to maybe 2000 press s for scale and let's scale this up so it fills the screen again now we just need to make sure that if we go to the camera and press p for position and if we move this around holding shift that this still aligns well and i think it's actually perfect like this we just want a bit of movement and a bit of depth in the image so i think this looks really dope let's fit up to 100 percent and let's i'm gonna make my window a bit bigger so we can see what's happening here now we can already start creating the animation but we're missing crucial element and that's in like the top left so i want to create that first and that's this cool looking chess piece as you can see i just created this using ai now we're just going to add this cool paper edge i'm just going to go to the pen tool make sure nothing is selected and then change the fill to a solid color and change the color to the same background color as this press ok and then we can just draw something and we can actually adjust this later on this is not permanent so we can just draw a basic shape just like this and i might drag it on a bit further and then we can already draw something here but i need to adjust this later on anyway because i don't know the positioning here uh, i'm just gonna go to the top here and then go to the top here and and the shape here i'm of course gonna make this 3d too and i'm also gonna make this chest piece 3d we can move this chest piece over i just make sure this is a top of our shape layer and i'm gonna press s for scale and we can scale this down now we can also add a text here by going to the text tool and then typing here world and making this 3d let's zoom in a bit now for the font i'm gonna use sinzel which is actually i think almost the same or the same font that the editor of iman uses and let's make this almost black now maybe the bolt is fine let's increase the size a bit and let's move this over cool now that we have our shape layer as you can see it's really smooth <laughs> we want to fix that and we can do that by going into contents shape and we can add a wiggle paths open the wiggle paths and then we can adjust the size and detail 
I'm first gonna increase the size by a lot and then I'm gonna increase the detail, maybe something like seven and then change the points to smooth. Wiggles per second, set that to zero. Something like this should work. We can adjust this later on if we need it. And then we can actually animate this and we can do that by going into the camera, pressing P for position, setting a keyframe, then I'm just gonna go to the five second mark and I'm gonna move this all the way to the right. If you hold shift, it will actually go quicker. Something like this, there we go. Then this already looks really cool, but now I'm gonna select these keyframes. Then right click keyframe assistant easy ease or hit F9. Go into the graph editor and then select the last keyframe. I'm just gonna move that a bit and the first keyframe I'm gonna move that a bit too. Just so it smooths in the beginning a bit, goes quicker in the center and then goes a bit smooth at the end. And now that we're on the right, we can actually add the other element. And that is this really cool crown, which is really huge. Let's make this 3D. Let's move this over, press S for scale and scale it down. And to get rid of this white, we can use extract or we can go to toggle switches modes and change the mode to multiply, which will also get rid of it. And we can add some text here. Of course, it's the same as here. You can just type something world make this 3d and move this over and let's move this up there we go cool now of course this looks already cool but now we're going to add some elements to make it look even better so one thing you see a lot is these birds this is some green screen footage we can just add a key light to this drop that on choose the screen color to green and then let's move this up a bit let's make this 3d let's press s for scale and scale this up just making sure that this is underneath the shape and that's already really dope. Then we have some film grain. We can drop that over. We don't have to make that 3D. We just have to right click, transform, fit to comp and change the blending mode to screen by going to the toggle switches. And then we have another film grain. We can also drop that on. Again, right click, transform, fit to comp and this blending mode needs to go to overlay and we can actually duplicate this another time then I might even add some noise to our shape. We can actually add just a normal noise effect. I'm gonna turn the color noise off and I'm gonna turn the amount of noise on to maybe I would say 10%. And then I'm gonna go to layer new adjustment layer and I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur to this. I'm gonna turn the blurriness to maybe 50. I'm gonna change my rectangle to a ellipse tool and I'm gonna double click so we have this rectangular mask. I'm gonna change this to subtract, press F for feather. Let's feather this out by a lot. That will add this blur to the edge, which looks really cool in my opinion. And now that we created this adjustment layer, we can actually add a exposure to this. I just double click on that and then just turn the exposure down. And this will automatically create a cool vignette. Now I think our shape is still a bit too sharp. So I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur to the shape too. Just make sure this is above our noise. So the noise also goes on the edge of that. And then you get something like this. I'm really proud of this result. I think it's such a cool effect. And do let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I, li I literally check out every comment, trust me. Don't forget to check out the Social Creator Club Pro. Link is in the description. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching. Really, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for all the support and then I'll see you next time.